went there, bro. I know. You get the most challenging lesson or, or class in the world uh, and, and got to deal with that type of stuff. Right. Um, but anyway, welcome to Fifty Shades of dot, dot, dot. That's three dots. I'm pretty sure you know what that means. It's an intimacy class. Yes. Um, yeah, so needless to say, we are extra nervous. Um, but amen. We, we, we want to glorify God with the lesson and, 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 and encourage you guys if we can and just speak the truth. Amen. Amen. So, first up, first up. The couple in conflict, right, uses wife as an acronym. Husband says to the wife, do you know the meaning of wife without information, fighting every time? Mm. Wife says to the husband, no, it's, it means with idiot forever. <laughs> the wife who's choosing to put into practice love in its finest with the understanding of 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says to encourage her husband. I'm sorry, the, the husband to the wife. Wonderful item for entertainment. Mm -hmm. Wife says to the husband, husband is an acronym. Handsome, useful, smart, but at night dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's more fitting. But thank you guys for allowing Erica and I to share this summer series tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Dink, and this is my, my everything, my wife, Erica. Uh, we've been together now for, married for 17 years. Um, November, we've been together for 25 years. And uh, we've been having sex for a long time. We've got an icebreaker here. Turn to your spouse and whisper the answer to this question. And remember, please, to whisper it. What is your wildest, wait a minute, because we just had to make sure there weren't any singles here, any engaged couples, any, everybody married. Everybody, okay. Oh, so if your spouse is not here, then make sure you ask the question when you get home. <laughs> what is your wildest sexual secret that you want to indulge in at least once in your marriage? Remember to whisper. Whisper. I'll give you a minute to do that, just a minute. What is your wildest sexual secret that you want to indulge in at least once in your marriage? Okay, everybody done? No? Give you a few more wow. seconds. <laughs> of course, it's the Cedar couple. Y'all should know better. Y'all should have your answers first. Okay, second and last question. When it comes to sex, what animal best describes your spouse? Remember to whisper it. When it comes to sex, what animal best describes your spouse. What animal? I don't want to hear none of you on Sunday talking about let's go tiger and all that good stuff. <laughs> Whisper the answer. Okay. All right. Y'all done? Before we get into the fun stuff, let's talk about some unhealthy behaviors that we should absolutely avoid when it comes to intimacy with our spouses. I think we have about, about 35, 40 minutes. Okay. Okay. Intimacy killers in marriage. I'm sorry. Let's pray. Let's pray to our Father in heaven. Most high God in heaven, thank you so much for another day, Father. Thank you so much that we can call you, Father, that we can call you everything that you are to us and have confidence in you, most high God. I pray so much just for the night that your Holy Spirit will speak powerfully through us, Father. Remove anything that has to do with Satan and pride from our hearts, most high God, and allow us to be humble in a way that represents your son. Father, we thank you, we love you, allow us to glorify you with our words, with our marriages, and everything that we share tonight. We thank you, Father, it's in your Holy Son's name that we pray, amen. amen. Intimacy killers in marriage. Number one, laziness. A good number of people tend to get lazy and stop trying to do the things that they did once they got married. They let themselves go, they stop doing nice things for their spouses, and lose interest in the activities that they used to do together. This happens with either a husband or wife, or in some cases, both. This can leave a husband or wife feeling cheated. When a spouse is lazy, you tend to get frustrated. And if you're lazy or known to consistently procrastinate, your spouse might not feel like cooperating with you in the bedroom. This affects the, this affects the bed life of both of you. 
If left unchecked, laziness can and will be a huge contributor of conflict in your marriage. Number two, pornography and or graphic romance novels. Many couples think that pornography and or reading graphically sexual novels are a harmless fantasy that can actually spice things up in the bedroom if they do it together. But the truth is that these, are, these things are an enemy of real intimacy. Don't just be physically monogamous, be ment mentally monogamous as well. If necessary, add pornography blocking software on your devices to protect your marriage and your family, and be open and honest about it to the people in your life because it hurts not to trust the one you are supposed to trust the most. Amen. The last one is digital distractions. And this is considered dumb love. How much dumb love are you giving your smartphone or your tablet? How much FaceTime are you giving your spouse compared to your laptop? Texting, Facebook, Candy Crush, email, whatever the digital distractions are, keep the screens turned off. Unless, of course, you're making a movie of your own. And if you're doing that, make sure you got a safe somewhere away from the kids if you have kids and have that stuff locked away. We absolutely do. So, moving on. With so many different topics to discuss involving intimacy in a sexual relationship, we narrowed it down to two topics. Passion and the, the, uh, the five sex needs in marriage. So some of the material that we share is from a book titled Love and Sex by Nancy Houston. It's a great read. And the other one is by authors Gary and Barbara Rosberg called The Five Sex Needs of women, Men and Women. It's a very good book. So, point number one, passion. Passion is a strong, amorous feeling or desire. Strong desire or lust. An instance or experience of strong love or sexual desire. Passion is best defined as a combination of sexual connection and attachment longing. When it comes to marriage, many believe that passionate monogamy is impossible, boring, and dull. But this is far from the truth. Passion provides a high, much like a drug, and you can stay intoxicated forever with the same person. Scientists have discovered that oxytocin, a bonding hormone released during the initial stage of infatuation, causes couples to feel euphoric and turned on by physical touch. It actually works like a drug, giving us immediate rewards that bind us to our lovers forever. Expressions of passion, such as holding hands, extended hugs, doubling the length of time that you kiss and tend to touch, are great ways to affirm passion and love for your spouse. This type of physical affection sets the stage for sexual touch that is focused on pleasure. Now, there is a sexual energy that comes into play before sex even takes place. The greatest pleasure isn't sex itself, but the passion in which it is being practiced. Hi, everybody. Hi. I must admit, I've taught and did a lot of devotionals and classes, because this by far was the hardest one to do. Um, but I'm going to just jump right into it. So ways to put passion back into your marriage. Number one, number one love is, con is constant, but passion needs recharging. We're going to love our spouse regardless, but the passion definitely does die out. We are often relaxed in our marriages, freeing ourselves from pressure of trying to impress our spouse. Just kicking, a, kicking back, walking around, looking all crazy, and the do-rag on the hair. And um, What's weird is that it has a, predict, a predictable outcome, and spouses are not impressed. So I'm going to use myself for example. I'm a pretty simple... I'm pretty sim simple in the intimacy department, naturally. As Dink puts it, I'm meat and potatoes. I'm a meat and potatoes kind of girl. So sisters, if it doesn't come natural for you, get input. Make sure that you're always studying your husband, his needs, his wants, and his desires. Depending on the stage of life, it often changes. When we get older, we have kids, we have health issues, all of that plays a factor. Remember I said I was meat and potatoes. But being married to Dink means 
Can I get some gravy with those mashed potatoes? Can I get some gravy with those potatoes? Can I get an instant potato? Can I get a slow cooked potato? <laughs> or, or is it a quick mashed potato kind of night? You have to get creative with, with the type of person you are. You don't have to just not do anything, but you need to be doing something. Example. My recharging sometimes, as simple as may sound, sometimes I need to go and retreat, spend more time with God, pray, and just get rested up and want him sexually. Because at the stage of life I'm in, it's just, it doesn't always come natural for me. I'm like totally out of energy for most of the part. And I, I had to ask think this before I wrote it. I was like, uh, I think I give you my leftovers sometimes. He said, you do. You know, and so that's what we don't want to do. We want to make sure we always is giving God first and our husband second. So that's the beginning of what recharging can look like in your marriage. Then after that, the fun stuff can come afterwards. Cozy, number two, cozy is comfortable, but not sexy. Oh, I believe you can have a close marriage and recapture a good sex life. First, you have to commit and to reuniting passion, but it takes time and it takes energy. Some of us have gotten way too comfortable and has neglected the one most important areas of our marriage, and that's intimacy. As Christians, we're supposed to have the most healthiest sex life. Why? Because we have the best manual ever written our Bible at our disposal. We also have each other for great insight and advice. So remember, please remember to be open and transparent to people we are close to. Number three, give your regular life a rest. Dress to impress one another. Dink actually prefers me in sweats and t-shirts most of the time. But it depends on a couple. Sometimes you like to dress up and go on dates. Sometimes you want to do um, an activity, a venture, try a different style of clothing, change your hair, maybe a little small tattoo, which I haven't gotten yet. My husband has a bunch of them. Ask him to grow his beard out. Ask him to cut his beard off. Ask him to just change his hairstyle as well. I want to always, I want Dink to always be attracted to me physically and emotionally. Dink does an amazing job in this area. If it's something in particular that he wants me to have or wants to see me in it, he buys it. If he wants, well, he cuts my hair, he dyes my hair, he should have stock in Victoria, secret, literally. <laughs> I'm not saying that husbands need to learn to do your wife's hair. My point is be vocal and wives be vocal and make suggestions to your spouse about their physical appearance. I know recently, maybe a couple years ago, I asked a uh, sister, I asked her, you know, do you like that? Or do you like your husband with it? And she was like, no, it's been 20 years and I just never said anything. We have to be each other's best friends. We both try our best to switch things up and keep things exciting and new. Spice it up some. Cleveland, you did this before, and I wish you'd do it again, but this is great. The Cleveland did a group date. But on a smaller scale, you can surprise your spouse with a key and a note while at a restaurant or a hotel, to a cottage, or even a bed and breakfast for a date. If it's not in your budget, that's okay. If you have small kids, that's okay. You can get away and do a romantic picnic in your bedroom with candle lights and soft music and since we've done that when our kids were little and we didn't have a babysitter and we didn't have any money be different for his wife be different wives let's be different for our husbands in the bed whatever he likes even role playing beautiful lingerie Scents, the mood the scents help the mood a lot as long as you both agree go for it being different for him in the bedroom doesn't mean he won't love you for everything you always been outside the bedroom bedroom remember Routine is the enemy of passion. Let's put a little bit of twist on Matthew 620. 
Matthew 6.20, Jesus said, but store for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So what Jesus is saying here, what he means is that you can't separate your passion from your treasure. You can't separate your passion from your treasure. Wherever you're putting the best elements of your life, that displays where your passions are. So for me, God will always be first and should be for every one of us that are disciples. But next to him is my wife. My wife is my treasure and the best of who I am is all hers in every area. If passion has decreased in your marriage, it may be because you've stopped investing in it. That means it's time to return to your first love and do the things you did at first. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as if working for the Lord, not for man. And intimacy doesn't come easy for everyone. For some, it takes a little bit more work, but it begins with motivation due to what needs to be done in order to be good at it. You become good at it by being a student of each other's bodies. Husbands, learn your wife's bodies. Learn their bodies. Every erogenous zone that they have, husband and wife, you should know it. Be a student of one another's bodies. Point number two, we're gonna spend the bulk of our time here. The five sex needs in marriage. When it comes to sex, especially for those of us who have been aroused, or who, or I'm sorry, who have aroused love before it's time, and we're not virgins, we came into God's church and marriage with what we've experienced in the world. The problem with that is those worldly experiences can taint the purity of the marriage bed and how we perform with our spouses. To combat the impure thoughts and unhealthy thinking habits, we can turn to God and focus on scriptures like Hebrews 13:4. Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure. Also, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. So we are brand new people on the inside, and we're beginning a new life with a new master. Amen? Amen. Now, it's impossible to share about intimacy and sex and marriage without including Song of Songs. Song of Songs is a wedding song honoring marriage. It's the most explicit statements found on sex in the Bible that can be found within this book. The purity and sacredness of love represented here, however, are greatly needed in our day in which distorted attitudes about love and marriage are commonplace. God created sex and intimacy, and they are holy and good when enjoyed within marriage. Song of Songs, chapter one, two, and three. It's the woman who opens the book by saying, kiss me full on the mouth. Yes, for your love is better than wine, headier than your aromatic oils. She gets right into it. If we carefully read this book about love and sexual fulfillment, we find that she frequently pursues Solomon. And not only does she frequently pursue him, she openly desires him, she asks for his affection, she regards him, and she freely loves him pleasuring her body. She allows herself to soak in and receive sexual pleasure. If you have not studied our song of songs, please do it. It will be a huge benefit for your marriage. Five sex needs in marriage, number one. They did a survey of hundreds of couples and he asked them, what are your most important sex needs? Number one, the number one sex need of a man is mutual satisfaction. He wants to know that his wife is enjoying the sex. It's very important for us because as husbands, we wanna please our wives. It's secondly important to us because it lets us know that we are a real man, that we're good lovers, and that we know how to please our wives. Look at Song of Songs 1, 12 through 14. When my lover lay down beside me, my fragrance filled the room. She's going in. And his head resting between my breasts. The head of my lover was a sachet of sweet myrrh. My beloved is a bouquet of wildflowers picked just for me from the fields of En Gedi. First of all, what I love about this passage is she addresses him as her king lover. That's what I'm trying to have my wife address me at. Her king. Like, I got a crown on my head and I'm doing my thing as her king lover. And then she thinks so highly of Solomon that she's turned on just thinking about him, right? Listen to what she says. She says, when he lies down beside her, her fragrance fills the room. She's saying, she's saying that she is so saturated with arousal that our fragrance fills the room. I'm just saying. 
wives, if you are not enjoying it, you just saying, go ahead, do what you want to do. Um, I got laundry to do. I got to walk the dog. That's not going to cut it. That's not going to cut it. The quickie type of sex can take care of some of the needs some of the times, but there has to be a regular sexuality where we feel as though you're having fun, that you're being satisfied, and that you're being fulfilled. It's very important to us as husbands. 67% of men they surveyed said that's my number one sex need. I need to know my wife is enjoying it and that she's having fun. Number one sex need for the wife sexually is affirmation. 67% of women said they need to be affirmed. Before sex, they need to know that they are appreciated for all they do for him and for the family. As a husband, you need to build your wife's self-esteem. During sex, she needs to hear that she's beautiful, that she's sexy, that she's a good lover. She wants to be affirmed. Number two sex need is for the both husband and wife. They're the same, it's called connection. They both wanna feel as though the other person cares about them and is connecting to them. Not just going in slamming against each other's bodies, but it's paying attention. The main thing is that you're paying attention to each other, that you're being sensitive to each other. There's a connection here. So both the husband and wife need to connect during sex. And that's pretty much the commonality here. So for sake of time, I'm only gonna share about three of them. This is the first one I'm gonna share about is connection. And I thought it was odd that both spouses number two need was connection and this is this is definitely big for Dink and I I always want to feel connected to him no matter what life is throwing us that's our go-to prayer and intimacy me being connected to him and him being connected to me is the most important goal in my marriage and through our connection our union our union brings glory to God. I'm going to share a funny story. So back in 2016, Dink, I'm going to try to get it out without laughing because every time I think about this, it's funny. Um, back in 2016, most of you know that Dink had an IV filter removed um, and they had to cut him from here to here. She was in the hospital for about five days, but it was, ma it was major surgery. Um, so once I got him home and got him settled, he started talking to me about not feeling connected, you know, that we, um, it's been five days, and we, this is the longest we ever not slept in the same bed together, and I already knew where the conversation was going. <laughs> and I don't even know if you remember this, but I was, I was just like, we, we going back and forth, because at the time my mama law was li living with us, so we whispering this in the living room, I'm like, babe, we, honey, we cannot do this, we just had surgery, so we going <laughs> We going back and forth, and he's explaining to me how he's going to he's going to be okay, and you know. <laughs> Needless to say, I gave in, and we were intimate. And afterwards, he was he was <laughs> he was pretty messed up. <laughs> and I felt terrible because I have to share the other story later about what happened to us in the hospital. Not, not the intimacy, but that's another story. So he had already hurt himself in the hospital. <laughs> that's another story. But anyway, getting back to my point. <laughs> that's a stretch. But of course, we, we have to be wise in the decisions that we make. But always make every effort to be connected to his spot. We were connected, but he was in a lot of pain. It was definitely not worth it. I'm checking to see if I didn't bust it. Six stitches in the whole nine yards. It was definitely not worth it. What? Well, anyway. <laughs> Number three need that a husband has sexually is the responsiveness of his wife. That means saying yes and being interested in sex between you guys. It communicates to your husband acceptance. Now wives, you can say no to sex, but the way you say no to sex is very important. You know, honey, let me prepare something first, give me a minute to get in the mood, let me clean up, and maybe husband, you can help as well to you know, get them along their way, something like that. 
but never communicate an angry or frustrated rejection. That's the worst thing for us as husbands to receive from you. Number three need for wife is non-sexual touch outside of the bedroom. Our wives have a deep need for non-sexual affection, and the more non-sexual a man is, the more sexually responsive your wife will become. This can be difficult for husbands. I know it is for me because we want sexual affection, but our wives need non-sexual affection as well. We have to remember, husbands, make it a consistent practice. There's much more to your wife than just a face and a figure. And I drop the ball in this area all the time. Because when I look at my wife, I just see a pretty face and a figure. So definitely pray for me in that. Number four sex need of a husband is for your wives to initiate sex. That's what men said. What is your number one sexual need? What men said they want their, their wives to initiate. Not all the time, but it's a huge ego booster for us as husbands. So I look at it like this. When you're in the mood, and, and from what I understand is, so th this is what my wife shared with me. Erica said that when she's at work, she can think about it, she'll get in the mood, and then when she get home, it's just gone. <laughs> that doesn't work for husbands. Now, I, if you don't know, which I'm sure you probably do, let me just add to what you already know. When we're ready to go, it's time to go. And if we don't that particular day, it just carries on into the next day. And if it doesn't happen that next day, then into the next day. And so when you approach your husband and you want to talk about anything, and he's frustrated or irritated, yeah, it's because he needs to, you, it's time for some sex to happen. So when you walk by your husband and you're in the mood, you brush up against him lightly and look at him in his eyes, say, I'm ready for you, I'm out. I'm gone. It's time to go. We straight to the bedroom at that point. But what you're saying to him is that you want him, that you're attracted to him, and you want to be with him. We want to know that it's not just our, our idea when it comes to sex. So I had to talk about this one for repentance. So initiation is, 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 is I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You're definitely working. Amen. I'm working on it. Okay, so I'm going to just jump right in. I felt like I had to share about this. You know, you normally want to share about the ones you're good at. No, I'm going to share about the things that I'm not good at. This is one of the ones that has always been a struggle for me. And I feel like the older we get, menopause and all that, it makes it a little harder. So maybe like a month ago, maybe, maybe like two months ago, I decided to set an alarm on my phone to remind me. <laughs> Wait, hold up. So the alarm that she said, I got to share this because I know that's not in the notes. The alarm says intimacy. And it's real big coming across the screen. We got three almost adult children. 22, 21, and 17. And all of them saw it. Yeah. I told them it was a part of my repentance. <laughs> And now the alarm goes off, and Damara says, that's disgusting. <laughs> Going back to my repentance plan. <laughs> so two years ago, I was diagnosed with a sleeping disorder. Cut it through the cases. It's the sister of narcolepsy. So Pray for me, I'm, I'm tired right now, I didn't want coffee because I didn't want to have to use the bathroom three or four times. But, you know, it was hard hearing that. Um, I told the guy I kind of knew what was going on. I actually thought I had narcolepsy, but this is something else that he told me. It's called long sleep. Anyway, I need 10 to 12 hours a day of sleep. Being a disciple, that's not gonna happen. So in short, at 9 p.m., my, my mind does start to shut down. It really does. And by 10 o'clock, I, I really can't sometimes even form sentences. Sometimes it depends on how tired I am. And I can tell the kids will think, you know, I got 15 minutes, I got 10 minutes, I got five minutes, honey. Um, I typically got to pack my stuff before I go to bed at night because I won't remember where my phone is and stuff like that. Yeah, I know most of you did not know that. I, I fake it pretty much all the time. But the challenging part was, is that I already didn't do well in, in, in initiation, and now I have the sleeping disorder. 
So I wanted to figure out, what am I going to do? And the first thing for me in my sinful nature is to do nothing. Okay, I have this thing. You know, I, I don't know what to do with it. I'm going to just pray. Dink is not a morning sex person. He likes night. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, we got to meet each other halfway. I, I don't know. So I'm just keeping it real. And honestly, I'm pretty spoiled. I have to do very little around the house. So I'm like, I got all these things against me. Like, you don't do much. You do much. <laughs> and Dink thinks he's slick. He do a lot of that stuff because he knows that I, so I won't have any excuse. <laughs> okay. And the thing is, he asks, he only a few things that I need to do. And I'm not gonna name them, just a few. But the number one thing is sex. So my tiredness and all, I think about it, so I decided to do the alarm for a reminder because there's always something that we can do. It's always something that we can do. We need to be praying about it. We need to be getting input. We need to be reading scriptures. And even wives, if you're not thinking about it, he is. Mm. Wives, initiate, initiation is very important to our husbands. I've sat in many deep times where the husband expressed that initiation is number one. And as Dink shared a few minutes ago, they did, even did a statistic on it. So on a more serious, serious note, last year, we, you know, most of you know, I lost my, we lost our mother-in-law in April of 17. I mean, April the 17th. And she was in hospice for a month. Now, needless to say, Dean took care of her 24 hours a day. And I would take care of her when I got home. So now, we got to get real creative. Dink gave, you know, Dink was, you know, giving up his time. And I, I think at one point we were like on autopilot. Okay, what's next? What, what's the medicine? What time do we do the medicine? And then I remembered, I remembered his need. I said, wow, we doing all this, but how can I show him I love him? How can I comfort him through this time, even when she passed? So I decided to make every effort to initiate as much as possible during that time to help him with his grief. Him and I, we've experienced a lot over the years. Health challenges, deaths, financial issues, often all at one time. Life will hit you, circumstances will happen. But sometimes, and, and I, I'm saying it jokingly, but seriously, um, intimacy was at one point all we had to keep our sanity. And I, I remember one time, this was a couple of years ago, when our children was wilding out. Um, young Mary's close your ears, but. And I remember it being a very hard time for Dink and I, and we went in one of the children's room and just, just cuddled and cried ourselves to sleep. And I think sometimes we think about, you know, you notice we say sex and intimacy. They're not always the same. You can have intimacy without having sex. I'll talk about a little bit about that later. <laughs> that was when we were going back and forth when we were doing this. I'm supposed to be talking about sex, Erica. I was like, I know, but us women, we need intimacy. And I know the men need intimacy too, but we need intimacy. <laughs> if your husband is having a hard time at work, financial issues, family drama, or even being grumpy. Yesterday, Dink and I was tweaking our lesson. He was, he was more agitated. So sometimes it's either he didn't have the best quiet time or sex. It's either one or the other. <laughs> so he was being a little grumpy towards then. I said, oh, I already know. I, I know what you need. I, I, I'm going to take care of you. It helps his manhood. It helps his leadership. It helps him with his insecurities as, insecurities as well. It builds his self-confidence when we initiate. Amen. You still with us? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Number four sex need for a wife is spiritual intimacy. I'm going to save this one for last because I have a small section that I need to share um, about that in particular. Number five, sexual need of a husband is like number one for the wife is affirmation. 
we need to know that we are appreciated, that we are good husbands, that we're good dads, we're good providers. We need to know that you are attracted to us, that we're handsome, that we look like something you want to be all over when you come through the door. How can I? Okay, so husbands, I say this with the utmost respect. If you let yourself go, if you don't iron your clothes, don't comb your hair, get hair cuts regularly, don't expect for your wives to be all over you. There's an issue there. We got to get back on track and aim to be attractive to our spouses. Okay, I'm sorry. Number one, five sexual need for a wife, and this is big, I know it is for Erica, is romance. Romance. She wants to know that there is more to it than just sex. Romance for a woman is the meaning of sex. It contextually communicates sex for her. It means doing special things for her. So, okay, I'm sorry. I'm not the one that messed up. He thought I was gonna mess up. <laughs> okay, so romance. So when, I was talking about it earlier. So when doing this lesson, Dick wanted to remind me, Erica, we talking about sex. I said, we got to talk things, you know, women, we, we like to talk things through. We like to feel wanted way before you get to the bedroom. When expressing the things I wanted to discuss, I reminded him that us wives want our husbands to make love to our mind before we even get to the bedroom. Brothers, we need romance. It does look different for every wife, so I might not have touched everything, but I'm about to run down a few. Remember, 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 brothers. This is a secret. Our first sexual organ is our brain. Dates, gifts, cooking, cleaning service. If you don't feel like cleaning up, walks. That's thinking our new thing. We love going on walks now. Getting our nails done, getting our hair done, a free day to do whatever we want. If we had small kids, I used to look Stop. forward to those days. <laughs> Running her hot bath, hearing about her crazy day. <laughs> a sweet text. Some wives want initiation on planning vacations, business ideas, long-term goals. It helps to know you are thinking of our future. Amen. Doing things without being asked. Mm -hmm. Start with asking your wise brothers, what is romance for you? Could you go home and start cooking and cleaning and she's gonna look at you like, I didn't ask you to do that. I didn't ask you to do that. <laughs> what is romance for your wife? It could be something as simple as just rubbing her feet after a long day at work. Sisters, the brothers now have gotten talking to. Their romance is different. And what I'm learning is that each husband is different. Teach us. You have to learn what your husband likes. Put deep. It's going to be different. I have probably like four or five things on my list. And mostly I read the book, Created to Be, in a, be to Help Me, that Sherelle recommended all of us to read. Dink, I'm going to put him out there. He's a, the command man. If it's four or five things on that list, if it's two things on that list, those things should get done because it's like not a good thing. But I only have a few things on my list, and I still have a hard time doing those. So... It's just like, it doesn't really matter. I mean, Eve had a perfect life and she still wasn't happy and still doing the things she done. So I realized that we really do need God in our life and we really do need each other in our lives to really help us to get back on track. Remember that each couple is different. I mean, we share a lot of things up here, but I think we just really need to understand that you have to know what works for you and your spouse, whether you're married to a non-Christian or a Christian, Everything is going to look different, but still get advice, get input. Yes. So the, 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 the nails and pedicure situation, 
<laughs> Y'all family, so we're going to share some stuff. It's a little story. So, not too long ago, our finances was rough. It was rocky. And so, it was rocky to the point where I couldn't even get my wife a pedicure, where she couldn't get a regular pedicure. So, we sitting on the sofa in the summer room one day. She put her feet up, and I rubbed her feet, and I came across the bottom of her foot. I said... That's a hard working woman. That's a hard working woman. It is. <laughs> I said, yeah, I said, um, <laughs> I said, what's going on, honey? <laughs> Needless to say, I made it my business to put that in the budget the next time. I got paid. So a few, of, a few of the homies noticed, but I, I, I'm not trying to sell profit at all. But I, I buy all of Erica's underwear. All of them. She can't remember the last time she bought a pair of her own underwear. Once every couple of months, she'll come into a Victoria's Secret bag sitting on a dresser full of panties. I just, I love panties for her. Or I have them delivered to the house. I have scented wax melts burning in the bedroom, music playing. I actually like music more than I do TV. I encourage our Bible talk husbands to do it, the young married husbands to do it. I mean, one day we all met up at Towson and went underwear shopping for our wives. That's our thing. If you're not familiar with our little men's trips that Cleve and I give, um, at the end of every trip on our way home, no matter where we are, we'll stop at the local mall and we hit Victoria Seat. That's just what we do. So I try to do it all without being told. Keep in mind, husbands, if she has to tell you to do romantic things for her, it doesn't count. It does not count. And if you don't know what to do, that's fine. But get some help. Don't be powerful and tear off and do something outrageous that she may not like. Talk to her. Talk to your wife. <laughs> Talk to her friends and start something new for yourself. Yeah. Here we go a little bit deeper. Let's get a little bit deeper here. Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 3. Like an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my... Well, I'm sorry. Like an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my beloved among young men. I delight to sit in his shade, and his fruit is sweet to my taste. Shade, fruit, apple tree, all ancient erotic symbols. Extra biblical literature uses these as the, um, from the commentaries that I've read, as a symbol of male genitals, indicating here a gentle oral caress. Please talk about your likes and your dislikes concerning all areas of intimacy and sex. Oral sex, another type of sex for those who are into that. And if I may add, we had a discussion with a husband once during the premarital counseling concerning this other type of sex. And what I've learned is that there's a, there's a very small percentage of women who actually enjoy this other type of sex and who reach orgasm in that way. If this is something that you're curious about, remember to be careful, be gentle, and do what you like. Now, I plan on making love to my wife for as long as the Lord will allow. And if it's okay with her, we're gonna try everything. Role playing, lubes and lotions if necessary, of course, foreplay, positions, lingerie, you name it, we tried it. I'm sure we don't have to talk about hygiene. I'm sure everyone bathes properly every day and because it's summer, maybe even twice a day. So I'm sure that's not an issue here. So let me say this. Erica meets every single sexual need that I have. My wife meets every single sexual need that I have, but that would not be possible without the first and foremost foundational type of intimacy, and that's going back to number four, which is spiritual intimacy. Spiritual intimacy can be seen as the hub from which all other intimacy types protrude. If spiritual intimacy is higher than the other types of, intim than the other types of intimacy, though they will have greater or lesser intensity, will have a certain level of natural resiliency. Spiritual intimacy comes from being in your word together, praying for and with each other, and worshiping together. Matthew 4, 4 says the word of God is nourishment to our souls. So when we are on the same spiritual diet, we can expect to grow in similar ways, therefore growing together instead of separately. Exercise. Husbands. If you do not exercise, you do not plan on having a good, fulfilling, or long-lasting sex life with your wife concerning your later years. As you get older, your body begins to lose testosterone. Low testosterone and the loss of muscle is the, is the cause of low libido. Once testosterone is lowered far enough, 
virtually all men will experience some decline in sex drive. Next thing you know when this happens, you see a urologist and the blue pill is being prescribed, and we don't want that. So exercise is extremely important. If you have high blood pressure, the medications prescribed for high blood pressure suppresses your sex drive. I know that because I'm going through it right now. Walking on a treadmill for a couple of miles every day, changing bad eating habits, going swimming, which exercises every muscle in the body. Stay active so that you can keep that blood flowing to all areas, especially below the belt. If you need a routine or some sort of workout plan, I'll be glad to help you to uh, put one together. In closing, Jesus refuses to be second place. The best of our lives, of course, should go to him. But after that, our greatest investment should be poured into our marriages. Not our jobs, not our children, and not our friendships, but our marriages. Amen. I did have a printout, but we didn't get to it in time, but there are 10 questions that every couple should ask in order for you to be on the same page sexually and to know each other better. So I'm gonna run through them. If you need me to repeat it, just say so. 10 questions every couple should ask. Which of my body parts are sexiest to you? Which of my body parts are sexiest to you? Number two, have I ever turned you off or frustrated you during sex? And if so, how? Have I ever turned you off or frustrated you during sex? If so, how? Number three, is there a place you'd like to be touched that I don't touch enough? Is there a place you'd like to be touched that I don't touch enough? Number four, what do you enjoy most about your sex life? What do you enjoy most about your sex life? Number five, what is your favorite sexual act or position? Number six, is there something you'd like to try sexually that you've never done? Number seven, what is your go-to fantasy for one another? What is your go-to fantasy for one another? Number eight, is there a fantasy that you are nervous to tell one another? Is there a fantasy that you are nervous to tell one another? Number nine, what are, the mo what are you most thinking about when you have sex? What are you most thinking about when you have sex? And number 10, was there a time when you thought this is the most perfect sexual moment? Was there a time when you thought this is the most perfect sexual moment? Um, before we pray and close, I did want to share um, one of the reasons I was just like, why, why am I so not like nervous about doing this class? And I think the number one thing is that we got we forget that one with intimacy. Or sex, however you want to say it, as we said. Our experience with it, our first thought about it, if you think when you think about intimacy and the first thing that pops to your mind, and if it's it if it's like conflict in your marriage, that's the issue that you need to tackle. I think all of us are at different places um, in our marriage where intimacy might be an issue, might not be happening. My encouragement to you is don't do nothing. Like, if, sometimes you just need to have a conversation. Sometimes you might not even be able to have a physical relationship with your spouse for many reasons, but you still can create intimacy. And that's one of the things I wanted to leave with you. Like, as a married couple, we need to make sure we are having some form of intimacy with our spouses. Because that, I, do, I know personally, that's an area that can definitely go on a back burner and not think about it with life, kids, problems, circumstances. But that actually needs to be 
the first thing that you're thinking about because of mainly because of the connection part. All of other stuff is fun and it comes with it, but you always want to be connected to your spouse. So that's pretty much all I want to share. Amen. Thank you guys again for letting us share. Um, Please just going to close this out. Please, everybody, give it up again for the Dukes. Let's pray. Heavenly and most righteous Father, Dad, thank you so much that we get to be disciples. Thank you so much in this world full of filth and nonsense and craziness where they've taken something that you have created to be between a husband and a spouse and just devoured it and made it so ridiculous. Thank you that in the family of God we can be open and talk about things like this. Father, we all know that our number one relationship is you, and then the next one is our spouse. We plan to be with one another for the rest of our lives. Please help us to enjoy the adventure of sex with our spouse. Please help us to enjoy the openness. Help us to enjoy the physicality. Thank you. Help us to enjoy the, 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 the emotional level so that we're not afraid. We, we, we don't want to say stuff because look, we're going to be with each other for a long time if it's up to you. And we pray so much that we just enjoy one another. And Lord, there are times when I ask the kids to pray for me about things because I know it goes straight to heaven. It doesn't have to go through a, a filter of sin. But I would ask the brothers to raise their hands if they agree with me. And we come before you and implore the leaders of the church to make sure that we do these kind of classes much, much, much more. Not just once a year, once every other year, that we can have these kind of classes and have these kind of talks so that we can grow in our marriages intimacy, in, with our intimacy. We love you so much. Thank you again so much for the Dukes and the way that they love you and they love us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. First lady asked him for the 10 questions again. Okay, so I'll run through them. Which of the first one is, which of my body parts are sexiest to you? Which of my body parts are sexiest to you? Number two is, have I ever turned you off or frustrated you during sex? And if so, how? Number three, is there a place you'd like to be touched that I don't touch enough? Number four, what do you enjoy, what do you enjoy most about our sex life? Number five is what's your favorite sexual act or position? Number six, is there something you'd like to try sexually that we've never done? Number seven, what is your go-to fantasy for one another? Number eight, is there a fantasy that you are nervous to tell one another? Number nine, what are you most thinking about when you have sex? And number 10, was there a time when you thought this is the most perfect sexual moment? Was there a time when you thought this is the most perfect sexual moment? moment. So an idea that I had, I just thought about this. We can have the questions printed out um, and have you guys just fill them out anonymously, share them with, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not anonymously, but between you um, and share them in your Bible talks if you have to. But once again, please, please, please be open with the couples who are in your lives, the couples who disciple you and talk about everything. Just keep in mind that Satan can use whatever's left in the dark. We don't want to leave anything up to him concerning our marriages. Amen? Amen. Thanks again. Good job.